how to sell your website or blog. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. What's up, everybody? It's David with WebsiteCreativePro.com. Welcome back to the channel. If you've not already done so, hit that subscribe button. So let's just jump into it. So selling a website is an option that a lot of people forget about once they build a property that's generating a few hundred dollars, if a thousand dollars, if not more. If it's generating money, it has a value, and then that value is something that someone else is willing to pay. Now, why would anyone run about, why even go through the process of selling a website? Like, if you have this website that's making money, why would you ever consider selling it? Well, it, primarily because a few different reasons. Because it does actually take up mind space when you have a website that you're managing. And like, for me personally, it's like, I can really handle like three websites by myself, managing it, logging in, making sure it's up to date, publishing content, you know, just doing the whole thing. Going beyond three, it gets a little bit of a headache and it's going to, some websites going to start to suffer because I'm not going to have the time and energy and effort to put into like a website that it deserves. And that's why you would go about like selling a website. Like when you start having like, oh, I have like these two, pro I have these three profitable websites. This one, I don't really, I want to kind of move on from. Like I just want to move on from this project and I can sell it and get a big lump sum for it. Okay, let's do that. How do we go do that? And that's basically why someone would ever consider selling a website primarily because you can just get a nice lump sum, be done with it, forget about it, and move on to other projects or focus more on uh, different projects that you currently have that are generating you money. Now, how much can you sell a website for? This is like a this is a hot topic that everybody always talks about, like 10 multiple or 2.5 multiple or whatever. Look, <clears throat> whatever someone is willing to pay for your website, that's what you can sell it for generally. Yeah, there's multiples that you can go by, but again, it, it's more complex than, than just that simplistic answer of like, Oh, well, take your you know, yearly earnings and multiply it by three or multiply it by six, and then that's what you can sell the website for. Like, it's not that simple. Other things come into account, like how difficult it is to manage the site. How is the website generating money? Is it really based off your personal brand, for example, or have you did a good job building a, per a website that's its, its own standalone brand? If that makes sense. Like, if your website's really tied to you personally, then that's gonna be a, more of a difficult thing to sell. For example, like uh, Making Sense of Sense is run by this girl named Michelle and she makes a million dollars a month or something like that, a million dollars a year actually, sorry. I have another video on that if you want to check it out with her blog. And it's like, but it's about her, you know? And it's like she couldn't really she couldn't really turn around and sell that blog for, you know, $10 million. Well, she's making a million dollars a year. She can sell that for a 10x multiple, right? No, 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 it doesn't work like that. It's like things like that, like how, how much is it tied into you personally? Uh, how does the website actually make money? Is it like, uh, does it make money from ad revenue and affiliate marketing products? What kind of support goes into it? How passive and hands-off is it? Um, typically websites that are more hands-off that take, require less work, that are generating money from like you know, like uh, Ezoic or AdThrive, like you have some network that you're running ads on and then affiliate marketing for like Amazon Associates, for example, then great, that sort of website you can easily sell for like a, a large amount because everybody wants a passive income website. So it's like the, the easier the website is to manage and run. And it's like, you just have this web property and it's like, okay, I'll just manage it part-time. Yeah, that's what people want. That's the holy grail of what everyone wants. So if you have something like that, you can sell it for a lot more. Now, how do you specifically pa prepare your uh, website or blog to sell. Basically, you have to take care of three things, traffic, financials, and then have like a, de a decent sales pitch basically. So traffic, obviously you wanna have like Google Analytics or something, like people wanna verify that you are actually getting specific amounts of traffic to your blog or website before they make a purchase decision about it. And then financials, like if you have a proper website and a business, then you should actually have like financial statements associated with that. Now, if it's a hobby, then, well, you know, you should tr kind of try and trans If it's a hobby that's making a lot of money, like hundreds of dollars a month, then you should definitely be considering trying to f change that into like having some sort of like financial statements that you could ever p show to like potential buyers. Because uh, <clears throat> that's what people want to see. Like you have to have proof. You have to have proof of traffic and proof of income. And then obviously a sales pitch. So d talk about your website. Talk about the history. Talk about why someone would be interested in buying it. That sort of thing. Now the next part is like how to actually find buyers for your blog or website. Uh, so you have you can start off by just like scouring the internet for your, your local marketplace, your local industry, uh, local buyers in your home country. So like if you have a website that's targeting like Canadians or Australians, then maybe start in your home country and look for like a relevant buyer that's associated uh, within that sort of website. And then it, you know if you can't find something like your local market, then maybe go industry wide. And if you can't go, in, if you want to expand further beyond industry wide, then maybe take a look at like a marketplace. Uh, 
Empire Flippers is probably one of the best marketplaces available right now. I don't want to date this video too much, but like, because it always changes, like it used to be Flippa, now Flippa's a bit spammy, so now it's like Empire Flippers, because the advantage of using a marketplace to like sell your website is that they go through a process of like verification, and they're just like the middleman, but they're a middleman, and they take care of the process for you to make it easy to sell your website, and make it easy to buy a website, and then they take a cut of that process, because doing it by yourself is can be a bit of a headache. And then last is actually like going through the process to sell. So basically what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to transfer over all assets. So you want to make sure like you have that in a clear specific contract about how that's going to work. So like what, what I would personally do is like if you once you agree upon a payment like, okay, I'll pay $30,000 or $50,000 or something like that for your website, then maybe something like, all right, pay 50% up front and then like begin the transfer process. Just something like that. Like uh, you have to get that sort of stuff in writing. And that's basically it. So you want to lay out in like in a contract, like how, how payment will be issued, how much payment, when, like initial upfront payment, then a payment, a final payment upon transfer. What about other assets like your web hosting, domain name, any like email list, any other of those associated accounts that needs to be transferred over that needs to be um, explained as well as lastly is support. Like, because like the buyers are often going to want support for the website uh, when they're going to have questions, managing like how long you can provide support for a year, one month, whatever that all that stuff you kind of need to take care of before uh, you get into the process of selling your website. So, anyways, with that out of the way, I'm going to show you now a quick little case study of a blog in the credit card industry that was sold for fifteen million dollars. So, if that sounds interesting, let's jump into my laptop and begin. Make sure to hit that like button and help my videos with the YouTube algorithm. So anyways, let's jump into my laptop and begin. What is up? Thank you for joining me in this video. Welcome to my laptop. Let's get started. Now in this quick little case study, I want to introduce you to a website called bankaholic.com. Now, it's a very ugly, unassuming website with a design that's straight out of the 2011. Uh, would you believe that this website was run by a single person and sold for $15 million? Would you believe me if I told you that? Because that is the story behind bankholic.com. Now, the website seems to have kind of died over the years and hasn't really, it, it's still updated. I mean, it's still having blog posts updated, but still, this design, it doesn't seem to be as well taken care of. But <laughs> financial blog, bankholic.com, is acquired for $15 million. Now, this was a one man. Uh, show run by a guy named John's Woos and basically he ran Bankaholic for about two years and it's just a simple WordPress powered uh, website. Now uh, this is Bankaholic from back in 2007 just to demonstrate you how old it is. This website was started about 2006 and sold around 2009 or so. John ran this website for about two years before selling it. Um, what did he do? How did he? How was he able to sell this for fifteen million dollars? Now you got to remember, back in two thousand seven, two thousand eight, blogs were still at that time kind of a new thing. People were still learning about the how to SEO and, and rankings and AdSense and affiliate marketing. This all that stuff was still you know it was underway, but it's still kind of a new thing. And most people were using blogs kind of like as a way to just share what they were doing in their day to day life. They didn't uh, leverage the real uh, power of blogs as building like as you as the way to like build a brand or something like that. This is at the same time that like Mashable.com got started and TechCrunch.com got started. Uh, you know, it, it reminds me of the way like Twitter was. Like when Twitter first came out, people would always joke like Twitter, Twitter. Well, I'm just gonna have updates on what I'm eating. Hey everyone, I'm eating a sandwich. But now Twitter has evolved into this powerful community square platform that gives voice to multiple people and and it's a way to share ideas totally different thing that it is now than people thought it would be and bankaholic is sort of like that because uh, john really used the, the power of wordpress and blogging to basically make himself into a multi-millionaire within two years and this is how it's done okay so uh number one uh this is from 2007 mind you look at all of the content over here blog post blog post blog post blog post blog post blog post if you get nothing else out of this john was working hard like he was like he was knocking out like a blog post a day like he was publishing a lot of content a blog post a day every other day he was really getting on top of it 
And number two, instead of going after like a uh, keyword as something simple like best credit cards or something like that, I mean, he is up here like best credit card deals and best CD rates. Like these are, you know, these are long, these are big keywords that have a ton of traffic and are super competitive. But he's going after superior in the savings nine month CD rates, Petamont Bank. Uh, Bank of New York Mellon's Financial Bank. He's going after like really long tail keywords and what ended up happening is that he started getting a ton of search traffic to his blog for all these financial terms and that is where the value of Bank Bankahol came from because he, he built a website that was targeting all these phrases, all these short little tiny phrases and he just built this massive site that was getting a ton of traffic from all these different little tiny search terms. But financial search terms are extremely valuable. I mean, the way AdSense works, the way advertising works is like, look, you'll get more if you have a specific um, product or service that you're kind of going after. Uh, what I mean is like, like if you have a dating blog, you know, your ad revenue could be maybe 15 cents a click. But if you have a financial blog, you can get two, three, four, five dollars a click just because of the competition that advertisers have over for that traffic. Because people that are, you know, searching for ING Direct Money Market account and find this post, that that's way more valuable than someone who's searching for uh, how do I get my girlfriend back. You know, that that's the basic idea. So that's kind of like his strategy. And just to put it in perspective, like you know, if I type in credit cards into the uh, Google AdWords, I mean, we're looking at like thirteen dollars right here. If I take any of these rates, like. Uh, uh, ING money market account. We'll just type it that ING money Okay, ING money market account like the average search is is only 10 to 100. That's the average monthly searches We're talking like 10 people to 100 people a month, but the competition is high and the suggested ad revenue bid is seven dollars So AdSense rough pays you about 68% uh, of this so like you're getting 68% of the seven dollars so you build a website that's targeting all these tiny little phrases and you then you end up getting like thousand two thousand three thousand visitors a day from all these little tiny search terms you're able to build this massive website that's able to generate a lot of money from ad revenue and as well as uh, credit card signups because there's our affiliate programs for credit cards and that's basically all John did like he has this ugly design uh, but he really focused on SEO. He really focused on his keywords and he did the work. He published content piece after piece after piece. While, while everybody else is chasing the shiny object syndrome, you know, John's is just doing his own thing. He's like, he's focused on his website and building his business. And he had an amazing payoff by being able to sell the site for $15 million because he built a credit card website that was you know, using what that was leveraging blogging. So it's like leveraging a new medium. Whereas most at the time, like credit card companies and banks are very traditional businesses that don't adapt and evolve with technology as quickly as they should, like social media and whatnot. And that's what Bankaholic was able to do is able to like just dominate the, all these bank terms and these financial terms and is able to just generate a ton of money in ad revenue. And now you can take the same concept for yourself. Like what is hot right now? What is blowing up right now? What is, uh, what is a website that you could create content on that you understand a lot about or you're really interested in about that you could build a website on and go after a bunch of super small specific um, keywords and build out a website, build out a blog and you know, make money from ad revenue and have affiliate offers. And because this should tell you that, look, there's still value in building a quality website. Now, this is not a blog. And that's the other thing that people get confused. They talk about like, uh, even here in this post, this post is from 2008, but it's talking about like, is a WordPress powered blog. This is not a blog. I consider these kind of websites like content websites, like for, you know, when I use the word blog, I literally mean blog. Like, th like my personal website, it, this is a blog. This is like just me, I write about whatever I want, I share my life, that's a blog. This is not a blog, this is a content website. Uh, website Creative Pro is a content website. It's not a blog. So, 
I just want you guys to understand and see the power of a content website when done right, when you focus on your edge. You know, what's your edge? What's your advantage? What are you doing a little bit differently than other websites are doing? And there's still a ton of potential out there. Okay, guys, uh, that is it for this video. Uh, Bankaholic.com, a one-man blog that was run for two years and sold for $15 million. And now John is a multi <laughs> multi-millionaire <laughs> because of WordPress, because he did SEO, focused on long tail keywords, like seriously long tail keywords. Like we're talking like 10 searches a month and just built this massive website. Like, you know, okay, this is a blog post, this is a blog post, this is a blog post, this is a blog post. You know, that's basically what John did. And it's like, boom, 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 boom. And just do that for day in and day out and don't quit and don't give up and don't be lazy and don't stop. And then boom, $15 million payout. And there's no reason why you couldn't do the same. All right, guys, that's it for this video. My name is David. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing, like the video, share it with whoever you want that you think would find it helpful. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.